This is Dr. Bev Knox, and you are viewing my psychology tutorials. Learn psychology while you sleep. This lecture is all about introduction to forensic psychology. In forensic psychology, there are five subspecialties. I will be referring to first police and public safety psychology, legal psychology, the psychology of crime and delinquency, victimology and victim services, and correctional psychology. So if you think you're going into the field of forensic psychology, after this lecture, you should be able to gravitate towards a specific subfield. There are many differences in the definition of forensic psychology. Some of the professional literature refers to forensic psychology broadly as the research and application of psychological knowledge to the legal system, whereas some of it prefers a more narrow approach, limiting forensic psychology to the application and practice of psychology as it pertains to the legal system. Forensic psychology refers to professional practice by any psychologist working within any subdiscipline of psychology, for example, clinical, developmental, social, cognitive, when it applies to the scientific, technical, or specialized knowledge of psychology to the law to assist in addressing legal, contractual, and administrative matters. This definition of forensic psychology focuses primarily on forensic practice, includes investigations, studies, evaluations, advice to attorneys, adversary opinions, and depositions or testimony to assist in the resolution of disputes. It can and does encompass situations before they reach the court, as well as those situations following the court decision. It includes activities as varied as the following. Courtroom testimony, child custody evaluations, screening and selection of law enforcement candidates, and clinical services to offenders and staff in correctional facilities. Today, the practice of forensic psychology is evident in numerous contexts. Here are just a few examples of things that forensic psychologists, depending on their specialty, may be asked to do in addition to working in academic settings. If you choose to go into police and public safety psychology, you may be asked to do the following. Assist police departments in determining optimal shift schedules for their employees. Establish reliable and valid screening procedures for public safety officer positions. Perform fitness for duty evaluation of officers after a critical incident, such as hostage taken situation ending in multiple deaths. Train police officers on how to assist mentally ill persons. Provide counseling and debriefing services to officers after a shooting incident. Provide support services to families of law enforcement officers. Inform police of the research evidence regarding the reliability of eyewitness identification and to help detectives solve crimes, such as by examining a crime scene. If you choose to go into the legal psychology field, you may be asked to conduct child custody evaluations, visiting risk assessments, and child abuse evaluations. 
assist attorneys in jury selection through community surveys and other research methods. Perform evaluations of a defendant's competency to stand trial. Testify at a trial in which the defendant has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Evaluate civil capacities, such as capacity to make a will or consent to treatment. Testify before a legislative committee on relationships between aggression and violent video games. Provide outpatient psychotherapy to individuals who have been ordered to receive treatment by the court. These were all under legal psychology. Now let's move on to psychology of crime and delinquency. You may be asked to evaluate the effectiveness of intervention strategies designed to prevent violent behavior during adolescence, to conduct research on the developmental factors of the mentally ill, conduct with legislators and government agencies as a research policy advisor on responses to stalking, Consult with school personnel on identifying troubled youth who are a potential threat to other students. To develop a psychological measure for assessing risk of harm to self or others among the mentally ill. And to inform the legal community about research on decision making in adolescence. Now let's move on to victimology and victim services. You may be asked to evaluate persons who are the victims of crime or witnesses to crime, to conduct psychological assessments for personal injury matters related to auto accidents, product liability, sexual harassment and discrimination, medical negligence, workers' compensation, or disability. You may also be asked to educate and train victim service providers on psychological reactions to criminal victimizations, such as post-traumatic stress disorder. And you may be asked to assess support and counsel those who provide death notification services. You may be asked to educate service providers on the impact of multiculturalism when victims seek mental health and support services. Now let us move on to correctional psychology. If you choose to work in this field, you may be asked to assess inmates entering jail or prison for both mental health needs and treatment, to assess prisoners for risk in parole decision making, to assess violence risk in juveniles and adults, to evaluate the effectiveness of programs for juvenile and adult offenders, sex offender treatment, violence prevention, or health education programs. You may be asked to conduct sexually violent predator assessments, also to establish reliable and valid screening procedures for correctional officer positions at correctional facilities, and offer mental health treatment to adults and juveniles in correctional settings. Now, let us review the different work settings of forensic psychologists. In regards to applied practicum, the work settings in which forensic psychologists are found include, but are not limited to the following, private practice, family drug and mental health courts, child protection agencies, victim services, domestic violence courts and programs, 
forensic mental health units, governmental or private, sex offender treatment programs, correctional institutions, including research programs, law enforcement agencies, federal, state, or local, research organizations to include government and private, colleges and universities, teaching or research. In all areas of forensic work, collaboration among professionals is crucial and necessary.